done, I've got the, the window facing the sun so that it heats up. And if I point this at the window now, you can see it's about G'day mate, how are ya? For anyone that's not in Australia, that means hello, how are you? And uh, for anyone that would like to know, I'm doing pretty good, thank you. Um, it's actually a really nice day here in Sydney. It's about 24 degrees, uh, that's Celsius, I've no idea what that is in Fahrenheit, but uh, I'm sure it's equally as nice in Fahrenheit. Uh, so if someone could do the conversion for me and let everyone know, that'd be brilliant. Um, yeah, it's kind of warming up here. We're starting to see some warmer days, more like, you know, 30 degrees and stuff. It's a sign that summer's on its way. Um, and I'm sure it's the opposite for everyone on the other side of the world. You guys are heading towards winter and probably starting to feel it. Uh, so I thought, while I'm hanging out here in the beautiful national park that you can see behind me, I might do a video on insulation um, for... Uh, the van because I've noticed that it's kind of a hotly debated issue in a lot of comment sections. Lots of people uh, are pro insulation and there's also a few people that are against insulation and I've heard some of the pros and cons. I thought I would uh, weigh in and give you guys my opinion and explain what I've done in my van and uh, whether or not it's effective and whether or not I would recommend it. So I'm going to finish my tea and then I'll head inside and show you guys what I'm working with and talk you through it. Before I forget, there was two things that I did want to mention. Uh, number one, I've got a new camera that I'm filming on. I don't know if you could tell the difference, but I'm actually filming on a GoPro Hero 7 now. Uh, I'm testing it out for this video, so probably most of this video will be filmed on this. Um, but then after this video, I'll probably go back to a mix between um, my DSLR and a GoPro. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. The other thing was, if you are on the other side of the world uh, to where I am and it's getting colder, not warmer, don't worry, this video still definitely applies because I found um, insulation works sort of in the same way on both ends of the spectrum. And I'll explain that as we go. So uh, don't be discouraged if it's getting cold where you are, it will still apply. So on the topic of insulation, I thought to kick things off, we'd just quickly go through the types of insulation. So the most common ones that you're gonna see, uh, particularly in vans. Uh, but the first type that I see and that I've used myself is insulation bats. Uh, if you haven't seen my video on it, I might cut in some footage of what they look like now, but they're basically the big rectangular things that you find up in the ceiling spaces or in the walls of houses and they're probably the most common type of insulation that you would think of. Uh, they come in different materials, that's probably an important thing to talk about. 
The most common and the cheapest would be the fiberglass ones, but there's some downsides to that, and I chose not to go with fiberglass because of those downsides. They, they're a bit hazardous in terms of, well, everyone knows that when you touch them, you get itchy because the fibers get stuck in your skin. They're like tiny little needles and they get stuck in your skin and um, they cause it to itch. And uh, the, the other thing is those little fibers can become airborne and you can breathe them in. And I just thought in such a small space, I would like to avoid things like that. So I didn't go with the fiberglass. I actually went with polyester. Basically the same thing, but it's kind of uh, the answer to that hazardous um, side of the fiberglass. Um, they do the same thing. They have similar ins insulation values. Downside is more expensive, but uh, I'd, I'd rather pay more money and have um, a healthier insulation, you know, a healthier environment to live in. Uh, it is essentially just what you see when they stuff pillows. It's the same polyester insulation stuff that you would get in pillows um, and cushions and things like that. Um, pretty, pretty effective and not so hazardous on the health. It is still plastic, so it's not you know 100% natural or anything like that. Uh, but it's not going to give you any airborne uh, fibers and things like that. If you're after a really natural uh, solution for insulation. I have seen a lot of people like to use denim insulation and you can also get wool insulation so you get 100% natural wool, uh, it's just sheep's wool. Uh, I did look for that originally, I looked for the, the wool insulation but I found that I could get it if I ordered it online but it was very expensive like to the point where I just thought it's not really worth it for the advantages that I'll get and it also had some disadvantages. Uh, I did read that you, you could potentially get insect problems because they like to burrow into the wool and I can't remember but I don't quote me on this but I think that uh, it was mentioned that it could potentially mold uh, so there were things I wanted to avoid so I, I didn't go with wool uh, but if you want if you really want to do something natural then wool and denim is pretty good too I mean that you can essentially recycle um, it's a bit better for the planet there's another type of insulation. I don't know the exact terminology. I just call it panel insulation. It's just like these hard foam panels that you can buy in these big sheets and uh, you buy them at the hardware store and then you can cut them to shape and you fit them into the spots where you want the insulation. They look pretty good. They look uh, pr like the pros with those are pretty easy to work with, I think, because you can just cut them to size and stick them in, the, in place. Uh, downsides, you can't just stick the board there you kind of have to glue it on so if like you imagine the inside uh, wall cavity of a van uh, you would cut out the shape and then you would spray glue on it and stick it on and I was trying to avoid any chemicals and things in my build I didn't want to use glues and stuff like that as much as possible so I didn't want to go that route and also when you do use that panel insulation, panel insulation you actually have to um, sort of fill in the gaps with that spray foam insulation it's it's that kind of gap filler i don't know the, what you call it exactly but generally what people would do is they'd stick the panels on and then in between the gaps they would spray the foam and they'd, they'd shave it down once it's dried and uh very effective insulation it's great and if you're not worried about chemicals and things like that then definitely you could try going with the panel insulation uh, i don't think it's particularly expensive and uh, I think it's pretty effective as an insulator. So the other one that you guys would have all probably heard of in the van community is uh, Reflectix. And that's super popular for good reason. It's a good product. Uh, Reflectix is the brand. Uh, you can get other products that are quite similar that do the same thing under different brand names. But basically it's like, uh, I would call it like bubble wrap uh, with like a foil backing on it. Um, it's probably a little bit more than that, but it, it, essentially that's what it comes down to. It's very thin and easy to work with, and you can buy it in rolls. Again, great product, but uh, I would just say that I feel like Reflectix gets more credit than it's due. It's not magic. Um, it, it's no su uh, substitute for legitimate insulation. I think it's actually better to use in conjunction with uh, like another form of insulation like I've mentioned. And I've done a similar sort of thing in my van, I'll show you in a little bit, but I've got like a reflective layer that acts as a vapor barrier um, and also keeps the heat uh, within the insulated part of the, the wall. And uh, yeah, I have it in conjunction with the polyester 
uh, bats and I think that's a great way to do it. This is all my opinion, by the way, so don't get upset if, uh, if you like one or the other. I just think personally, I would use insulation and the Reflectix if you're gonna go with the Reflectix. Uh, Reflectix is good if you wanna make like window covers. I have a similar thing that I use for my windows to keep the, the heat out, reflect it away. So real quick, just to recap on why I chose the polyester bats instead of any of the other kinds of insulation. Um, is basically because it's relatively cheap, it's pretty easy to find, it's non-hazardous and non-itchy, and you also don't need any glue or spray foam to uh, install it, and it works. Uh, it's, it's, it's effective insulation, so that's why I went with it, and then I also, like I said, put that vapor barrier in. The reason I put that in was A, because someone gave me a roll for free, uh, so I thought there's no point in not adding it in, it meant a little bit more work, but I think it was worth it. And uh, B, I just think that the more insulation, the better. And if you've got that vapor barrier, there's just less chance of getting mold and things like that. Uh, so yeah, that's why I went the way that I went and I'm really happy with it. So as for why you wouldn't insulate your van, there's probably a couple of reasons. One I can definitely sympathize with is just essentially because you want to save time and money on the build. I did that with my first van. Uh, I just wanted to jump into the build. I didn't want to worry about insulating and, and all that. And I didn't have a lot of experience as well in the whole van life thing because I was just getting started. So I didn't realize until later how important insulation was going to be. And that's probably the most sort of common reason. But the other idea that people have in their head is that if you have insulation and it's hot outside, then what's going to happen is that heat is going to eventually get through the insulation, which is true, it will. But then the idea is that that heat's going to be trapped inside the vehicle and when it cools down later in the day, it's not going to cool down as quickly in the vehicle because it's insulated and you've got all that heat trapped inside. And I agree with it to an extent, that is, that is sort of true. But the one thing that to me negates that whole argument is having ventilation because as long as you have enough airflow going through the van, like I do with my two fans, and you can also open doors and things like that, as long as you've got enough airflow, you're keeping the ambient air temperature outside coming in, uh, it's gonna keep taking away the hot air, and then the insulation is just gonna slow down the transfer of heat from outside to inside. So if you're parked in the sun in the middle of summer, it's, uh, there's obviously gonna be a lot of heat beating down on the van, especially if you've got windows. I'll go into that in a second, but you've got that heat beating down on the roof of the van and on the side of the van, and uh, the insulation slows down the transfer of that heat. And then uh, you're not getting any direct sunlight on you, obviously, and you've got the airflow going through, taking away any of the hot air. Uh, what it, to me, what it's like is it's like being in the shade. Obviously, it's not air conditioning. You can never make the inside cooler than the outside ambient temperature but you do, um, if you have enough airflow, you do have essentially, uh, it feels like you're in the shade. And that's, that's what I would say on that topic. Uh, there's probably gonna be people out there that disagree, but I am talking from experience. I had my last fan not insulated, like I was saying before. And this one is, I've gone you know, well out of my way to do a good job of insulating it. Uh, so my last van was literally just metal and glass. It also had more windows than this van. This van only has the one side window, whereas my last van had windows all the way around. And I totally regretted not insulating the van and I regretted buying a van with so many windows. Living in Australia, it gets hot here. Like we get, you know, 40 plus degree uh, days and that's again, Celsius, um, but that's hot. You know, it's like being out in the desert. Uh, so if you've got just glass and metal and you're trying to sit inside, you just, it's not going to happen. So you end up being forced out of the van early in the morning and you can't get back in until late in the afternoon when the sun goes down. Um, but yeah. To go into the topic of windows a little bit more, uh, I would just say that glass is going to be the worst uh, heat conductor. And I, when, when I say the worst, I mean the most effective essentially. Um, when it comes to uh, your van. So the more glass you have, the harder time you're gonna have keeping a temperature. 
um, and that goes for whether it's hot or cold outside. So if it's a hot day and you've got the sun beating on the window, that it's going to be like having a heater in the van. It's essentially just like a big magnifying glass sending the heat in. And again, if it's cold outside and you've just got windows all the way around, all the heat from the inside is going to get sucked outside um, really quickly. And I'm not talking about an open window, I'm just talking about glass. Uh, so that's why my current van has a lot less windows than my last van. I still wanted one window just so I can have a view and you can always combat that by making reflective panels and insulation for the window. Uh, but it's never going to be as good as just having a white wall uh, with insulation and wood panelling behind it. Uh, so yeah, windows are a little bit of a problem when it comes to controlling your heat. So it's actually a little bit later in the day here. Um, there was something I wanted to show you. I needed the sun to be on the side of the vehicle and where I was in the National Park, I waited too long and ended up getting shaded by trees. So I've just moved and it's uh, hopefully still gonna, I'm gonna be able to demonstrate this to you. It's a bit later in the day, the sun's a bit low in the sky and it's not as hot as it was earlier. So it won't be as drastic a difference, but I was gonna show you the difference between having an insulated uh, van wall versus having a bare window and the difference you get in, in heat. Um, so what I've got is I've actually got this device here, which is a uh, infrared thermometer. And it's a little laser and it's got a little digital screen on the back and you point the laser at whatever you want to measure the temperature of and it will give you uh, the surface temperature of that. So if I was to, I'll put it into Celsius first, if I was to aim this at something within the van, that'll give me the sort of ambient temperature at the moment, it's about 25 degrees. And then if I point it at my leg, for example, you got 32 degrees. Uh, that's Celsius, so to give you an idea, in Fahrenheit, it's about 89 degrees. Um, so what I'm going to do is point it at the wall and then at the window to show you the difference. So this wall is right next to the window here and it's uh, totally insulated. So behind there you've got that polyester insulation I was talking about and you've also got the uh, reflective um, covering, like the vapour barrier. So what I'll do is I'll point this at the wall and you can see it's about 26, 25 degrees Celsius which in Fahrenheit is 78 and now if I come back to the window here and we're looking uh, directly at the sun, I've got the, the window facing the sun so that it heats up and if I point this at the window now you can see it's about 40 degrees Celsius uh, which is a massive difference. So 40 degrees Celsius is uh, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So no matter how you look at it, whether you're talking in Celsius or in Fahrenheit, the difference in temperature is drastic. Um, I don't know. It's something to think about anyway. I just wanted to illustrate that point uh, a little bit clearer. Hopefully that helped. Anyway guys, that's going to be it from me for now. Hopefully you got something out of this video and it's helped you in some way. If it has, let me know in the comments section what you thought and uh, make sure you like the video. If you're not already subscribed, then do that and make sure you tick the notification bell when you do just so that YouTube actually lets you know when my videos come out. Other than that, I'll see you next time.